presentation is about structural change and deindustrialization. What does structural economic change even mean? What are the factors that drive that change and what is the big problem about deindustrialization? Okay, so first of all, let's tackle for the UK. You can see here that there are four different types of um, activities which contribute to the GDP in the UK. These are called sectors. So sectors are where it's divided up into different sections of the economy. In 1950, maybe in the lifetime of your grandparents, 50% of the GDP came from services. By 2016, that's now 80%. This shows that there's been a structural change, a change in the proportion of the GDP coming from the different sectors. So in Vietnam, let's start with employment in primary industries. Primary industries are those that are involved in the exploitation of the Earth's raw materials. So we have the fisheries from the oceans, we have agriculture, and we have mining. These are the core activities which are classified as primary industries. At the start, before industrialization starts, we have around 70 or 80% of the population involved in these activities. However, as industrial stage um, proceeds, the number of people employed in primary industries rapidly starts to decline to almost nothing. So only 4% of our um, population are employed in primary sector today. Even in LIDCs like Vietnam, around 40% are employed in the primary sector. The reason why there's such a dramatic decline from 70 to 80% of all employment um, in primary industries is because those sectors are transformed by industrialization. So in fisheries, it's dominated by super trawlers, only a few, many fewer boats are needed. In agribusiness, it's dominated by large scale mechanized operations, reduction in the workforce needed, and also in global mining the same, and concentration of the industry into few, a few multinational firms. So this is the heart of the Clark Fisher model, the green line. Industrial output increases, and as it does so, employment also increases in this sector. This is the sector where things are made from raw materials, the raw materials which have been extracted. And in the United Kingdom, we had a dramatic increase. And then since nine, late 1960s, 1970s, we'd have a crash in the number of people employed in those industries. So um, this affected our cities severely. Birmingham, Manchester, London, Sheffield were all affected by um, the deindustrialization process. Now, only 8% of our workforce in the United Kingdom is employed in manufacturing industry. But by contrast, China in 1990 started to go into the industrial stage. And in 1990, it produced less than 3% of um, output, global output in terms of manufacturing by value. Now that's 25%. Um, China makes um, an estimated 70% of all mobile phones. Related to the decline in manufacturing in advanced countries, is the so-called global shift in manufacturing. So as the advanced countries lost their competitive advantage, they were first in the market, the UK was the first country to go through the Industrial Revolution, but gradually over time it became less competitive as wages increased and there was more regulation and there was decrease in competitiveness. This led to the global shift in manufacturing whereby EDCs took over the manufacturing they had comparative advantage of lower wages, less regulation and cheap transport costs through the use of containerization. EDCs were also able to leapfrog some of the stages which ACs had been through in terms of production. They reduced production time using just-in-time production techniques and they increased efficiency. Unfortunately, while in EDCs there was a boom in manufacturing and a rise in employment, in ACs like the USA, certain areas were very badly hit by the loss in manufacturing industry. That loss is called deindustrialization, the loss of the manufacturing base in the country. And in places like Detroit, the impact was extremely severe. Here you can see one of the factories which has closed down and left a derelict site. The city of Detroit suffered from mass unemployment. It suffered from all kinds of other impacts and poor environmental quality. It had increase in crime, in arson, and this is often related, many of these problems were related to the decline in the tax base. As the industry collapsed, so did the ability of the city to tax its citizens. But as we can see here, there has been a change in the employment. You can see this purple line here. This is the growth in the service sector. 
So um, service sector in industries have taken off in advanced countries. And advanced countries are now in what's called an information age. Raw materials that we now have are information, intellectual property, um, knowledge. And that information age has been linked to a number of innovation cycles in ACs. Innovation cycles are shown here. A product is invented, rises, comes to market, and then is overtaken by the next wave of innovation. So here we had um, the use, first use of hydroelectric power, then we had steam power, then we had the internal combustion engine, the car, and then that's been overtaken by electronics, aviation, space industry, and now we're into um, this stage, or some would argue we're in a sixth wave of innovation. Here's your chance to check your understanding. Quickly sketch the clock Fisher model on a piece of paper from memory. Then, on the next slide, try and put these numbers in the correct place on the model. The final slide has the answers for you. Read the statements and then place the number in the correct position on the Clark Fisher model. So number one, this is pre-industrial, mainly extractive industries like mining and agricultural dominate. Number two, we get the development of quaternary industries. Quaternary industries are those dominated by IT, research, development and biotech. At number three, here we have, over time, we tend to get um, the decentralisation of manufacturing to areas like China. So people transfer their um, manufacturing base to countries with lower wages. Number four, uh, raw materials are not processed at this stage. This would be stage one, the pre-industrial stage. And um, number five, advanced countries like the USA and the UK experience severe economic and social problems and dep demographic problems during this stage. And that's because there's a drop in the employment and the people who've been employed in manufacturing industries can't straightforwardly transfer to service industries. We get, we get often in many cities, particularly the inner city, we get a cycle of poverty which sets up. Arguably, this is the most challenging stage, number seven, for um, advanced countries to navigate.